I'm awakened by the incessant ringing of a telephone. I still have dreams caked in the corners of my eyes and my mouth is dry and tasty. Again, the ringing. Slowly, I bustle out of bed, the remnants of an erection still lingering in my shorts like a bothersome guest. Again, the ringing. Carefully, I have gone to the bathroom as to not display my manhood to others. There, I make the perfunctory morning faces, which always seem to precede my daily contribution to the once blue toilet water that I always enjoy making green. Again, the ringing. I shake twice like most others, and I'm annoyed by the drummer that always seems to remain, causing a small acreage of wetness on the front of my breeze. I slowly, languidly, lazily, crazily stumble into the den where my father smokes his guitar, I mean cigars, in his easy chair. I know all about easy chairs. <laughs> and then I sing a song for my friends. You can have them because Jesus is the best Ringing, ringing, doing a goddamn motherfucking son of a bitch of ringing. I walk into the kitchen and I stare blankly at that shrieking plastic bastard. Since it keeps ringing, I know it's her. Since it keeps ringing, she knows it's me.
Scott David here speaking with Marilyn Manson, front person for Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids. How you doing, Marilyn? Hey, man, I'm spooky as always. Brand new. How about you? Hey, doing pretty good. How did Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids originate? Well, Scott David, uh, the idea of Marilyn Manson has been brewing in my head one form or another since I was about 12 years old at a Christian high school in Canton, Ohio, but then, you know, I, I moved and grew up and changed my shoe size and stuff, and then I met this guy named Daisy Berkowitz, who's kind of ripping on the guitar, and, uh, you know, we had two different, you know, styles, two different tastes of music. He, he liked more ethereal, kind of surreal soundscapes of guitar noise, and I was more into more distinct, hard uh definitive uh you know sounds and whatnot and but we both had the same ideas as far as art wise what we want to do with the band so we got together we made this music and it's just what we wanted and as far as the rest of the band they were friends of mine olivia newton bundy and josh Usbeck, and they were interested in what we we're doing so we brought them in and that's how it happened how did the name marilyn manson and the spooky kids come about well that's you know, that's kind of obvious, because Marilyn Manson is on my birth certificate and all. But, as far as Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids, this is the illegitimate offspring of the world's most infamous, nefarious, and in our eyes, brilliant, cult, psycho, weirdo, wackos in the world. Specifically America, of course, because we're an American band. Well, personally, you don't really look like a Marilyn, but I guess if your mother named you that, what can I say? Hey, How would man. you describe your music? Well, you know, people hate to describe their music. Uh, what we've come to call it is beat up your mom music. Uh, as far as describing what it sounds like, um, I guess you have to listen. I, I think it's uh, pretty much like 60s meets 90s, psychedelic, industrial brain tumor disorder thrash sort of thing it's kind of groovy you know it's groovy i guess the word groovy will work well i guess that's pretty specific <laughs> is there a concept or a message you're trying to convey in your music well scott david as far as a concept goes uh yeah there's a definite concept but you know Stuff like that. I put out a lot of ideas in the lyrics and in, in the way we do our things. There's a lot of ideas floating around. And people who know what it is, people will pick it up if they know what to pick up. As far as coming right out and saying anything, I don't think that I could, especially on this radio station. Well, thank you for that. Sorry. How do you approach writing new material? Well... You know, I, I've got a lot of words going around in my head. It's like a chewed up a dictionary and kind of puked <laughs> it over my brain kind of thing. And, you know, Daisy over here is, you know, pretty much the same way with his music. So we get together with uh, the guitar and, and it's kind of tribal with the percussion. And we just work with it. It's really tribal. Sounds We're like a tribe. Sounds like an encyclopedia of insanity. Yeah, that's that's kind of cute, Scott. <laughs> what song did you have the most fun with? Well, Scott, I could sing it for you really quick, and this is to all the girls I never loved before. <laughs> I had a little monkey, I sent him to the country, and I fed him on gingerbread. Along came a choo-choo, knocked my monkey cuckoo, and now my monkey's dead. That's my favorite. You know? No wonder why you had, never had any girls that loved you after that well. rendition. <laughs> anyway, what artists were influential to you in the past? Um, when I was uh, growing up, I don't know, I can't say that I ever grew up. I'm kind of like an evil little Peter Pan that will never get older. But as far as uh, bands that I listen to, I like. In a Gata De Vida, Black Sabbath, and Jim Morrison was my, you know, he's my, one of my all-time idols. And, you know, a couple of years ago when I got Papa Manson, that's Chuck, uh, his album, it was a great influence on me. Very innovative dude, and 
I hate that word, dude, but I'll say it again. Innovative dude, and and uh, he influenced what we're doing right now to a certain extent. And a number one best-selling album, may I add? Yeah, all the time, Manson. He's on Billboard still. Well, who do you find exciting presently? Well, Scott, uh, not to offend you or you know any of your listeners, I mean the Wax Track scene and network is really cool. And there's a lot of, you know, bands that are breaking some new uh, patterns here. But, you know, industrial music in general is starting to get homogenized. But, like, the, I'm really impressed with the new Knights of Rab album because they, uh, they've done some really different stuff this time around. And, and the Revolting Cox album is pretty, pretty good for what they're doing right now. Hal Jurgensen, anything he does is great. So, other than that... Um, Crispin Glover, who is not really known for his music, but he's that crazy actor from River's Edge, and he's also another one of my idols. Of course, his album is one of the greatest things around, so that's that's what I like right now, man. Another bestseller. Yeah, I like to, you, to find the good stuff. you got to dig deep, you know, like cemeteries and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> In general, do you feel that uh, many bands now are pretty much lacking in their live performance? Well, you know, lacking, I don't, it's hard to say because locally bands are, everybody does their own thing and who's to judge what's what's good and bad. Um, there weren't, any, I haven't really seen any bands locally that that I was disimpressed with. You know, I've been impressed, impressed with a lot of local bands, but as far as national bands, I've been seeing a lot of, a lot of acts that are just, you know, standing there singing the album verbatim, and who wants that? Because you can just get a, a little pinup out of Tiger Beat magazine, put on the CD, <laughs> and you know, you know, stand there in your uh, towel or whatever you like to wear when you come in the door from work. Speaking of Tiger Beat, aren't you guys on the cover this month? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely us. What was that? No, it's New Kids on the Block. Oh, man. yeah, I who keep getting we want. Well, I can't say what we want to do to them, but you know. Yeah, you guys certainly look just like them. Hey, man, those guys are evil. Because what kind of young prepubescent punks that don't even shave it have, like, captured the attention of all the women in America? They're evil. That's all I have to say. All right? Why didn't you decide to do a cover of Black Sabbath's Iron Man? You had mentioned them earlier as an influence. Um, I always thought that it was a really powerful song. And uh, it was a really guitar-oriented song, so Daisy was all for doing it. And um, we just wanted to make it more powerful and put it into a 90s context, because I've always said from the beginning, we're what heavy metal could have been, you know, because Black Sabbath was like the last great heavy metal band. Now heavy metal's like a, a curse word to me. But as far as that goes, um, and since the song was guitar-oriented, I decided to write the lyrics as a homage to Daisy by uh, writing about the son of Sam. And we call it Son of Man because it's second generation of Iron Man. And it's also the Son of Man is a religious reference too, but I'm not going to preach to you so you can look it up yourself. So pretty much the music remains the same, but you added your own lyric. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It changed everything but the chorus because the chorus pertained to exactly what I was singing about. Because, uh, it appears that uh, old David Berkowitz himself had a lot in common with Iron Man. You have a song called Strange Same Dogma. What is yeah. that about? Well, in general, that song really is dealing with prejudice and, and uh, ignorance in certain people that are in authority positions. Um, specifically, it's aimed towards the PMRC and, uh, you know, that whole scenario. I mean, we're not the first person to sing about this, and we're not trying to jump on a bandwagon. I just want people to know how we feel about Tipper Gore, and I think that she's speaking her mind when she shouldn't. Okay, well, let's check out a tune right now from Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids. This is Strange Same Dogma on 88.5 WKPX and the Alternative Beat. We're back here speaking with Marilyn Manson from Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids, and we just heard Strange Same Dogma. Yeah. Marilyn, there's all this reference going on that um, people actually have accused you of 
being insane. How do you react to that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. People, yeah, people want to know why, yeah, if we're insane. Um, I don't know, to, to quote Papa Chuck himself, you know, the world of madness is a lot bigger than the world of sane, you know. Sanity is a little shoebox you can run around in, you know. Insanity is the universe, you know. So what does the future hold for Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids? Well, man, we want to, you know, be brand new. What we're trying to do, and uh, we want to affect as many people as we can with our music. We want to make changes in this town. We want to develop our cult, make it stronger. We got the Spooky Kids hotline. We got people calling in all the time. You know, mass amounts of people, wackos, crazies. I love them all, and I want to thank them all. And, uh, you know, we're just going to move something is what we're going to do. Well, and I'd like to thank you, Marilyn Manson. It's yeah. definitely been a rare pleasure. And I do want to mention uh, that you'll be uh, playing in downtown Fort Lauderdale this Wednesday, May 30th. Is that correct? Yeah, down by that new river bridge and all the fun stuff that's been happening around that area. <laughs> okay, and let's just check out one more tune here from Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids. This is White Knuckles on 88.5 WKPX. You know, just because you say you're progressive doesn't mean that you're on the cutting edge. I guess you have to go even beyond the wax tracks. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so what does the future hold for Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids? Well, we want to affect as many people as possible with our music. And, you know, we're doing everything we can. We got the Spooky Kids hotline. I can't give out the number, but check the record stores. You know, they'll give you the number. We got wackos calling in all day, all night, and it's it's great. So we just want to, we just want to make some changes in this town. That's what we're going to do. So be at our show.